Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday, April 7th, and it's time to go on the record. Kim Driscoll is the mayor of Salem. Her city, steeped in history, undergoing historic change. Like so many local communities, can foundations of inclusion survive rapid change? What should happen next in health care? We ask consumers. Former Massachusetts Attorney General Martha Coakley signs on with Jewel, setting up a possible legal showdown with her successor. Is there fire amid all that smoke? Let's go on the record. From WCVB Channel 5, the inside word from Washington to Beacon Hill. Today's newsmakers are going on the record. Good morning, everyone. This is the first Sunday in April, and the Red Sox home opener is on Tuesday, so officially it becomes spring. Hooray. When the Red Sox play a home game. Our guest this week is Salem Mayor Kim Driscoll. She's a Democrat, and she has served as Salem's mayor since 2006. Prior to that, she was a deputy city manager of Chelsea for five years. She's a graduate of Salem State University, where she majored in political science and was also a member of the women's basketball team. Team. Were you a good player, by the way? I like to think so. Yeah, were you a point guard? Where were you? I was a point guard, absolutely. You, you were a point guard? I was a point so guard. So you distributed the ball, huh? That's what you're supposed to do when you're a point guard. <laughs> well, it's great to have you with us. And, and, you know, Salem, Salem is unique in, in many ways. It's, it's geography, it's character, it's personality, but it, it faces many of the same challenges that many communities throughout eastern Massachusetts face. And, and we're talking about the rise in real estate prices, which has led to redevelopment projects, and that's putting a big squeeze on people outside the high income bracket. So given all of that, how does a mayor deal with that? How does the executive of a city deal with that? Yeah, really great question. Really great question. There's no doubt that uh, communities outside of Boston are really struggling with affordable housing. Salem's had a 400-year history of a place that's had sea captains' mansions next to tenement houses where folks worked on the dock. It's mm -hmm. a really rich mix of people, and it contributes to our character. We really value that. And with the lack of affordable housing, the lack of housing in general, it's impacting young adults, it's in impacting working families, and it's certainly impacting seniors. And for us, we're trying to put in place policies that can help aggressively address the housing supply issue while also recognizing we build we need to build a lot more housing that's affordable for people who are working in Salem, which is primarily transport, you know, the, the service industry uh, and the like. Well, that's what it does. It ultimately impacts the community. So because if people can't afford to live there, you, it, it affects the, 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 con, the creation, the character itself of the community if you, if you have only just a certain level of people who live there. And a place that's had this rich diversity for us, it's who we are. We celebrate that. We want to keep that. I don't want Salem to become an affluent place place uh, that's just attracting people from outside our right. community to come in and pushing right. out folks who have been there. So we're going to have to be more aggressive around smart growth policies. We're going to have to actually build more housing and recognize that we're going to have to address those impacts. And we're going to have to work on it together. It's not something one mayor can solve, one city can solve. It also has to work in, con in concert with what's happening and in it, the region. And it, but it's not something that's cheap. It's not something that's inexpensive. And it's, it's not cheap. It's not easy. And it's not quick. Yeah, right, right, right. right. <laughs> yep. We just don't have those. All right. I, another, uh, another obvious issue for Salem, as well as Boston and the entire Massachusetts coastline is climate change. Yes. And, and it's, it's, we've seen this, this is video, we've seen this storm surge in Boston. Salem is also vulnerable as well, right? How are you dealing, this is an issue that's real to your city, it's real to the city of Boston. It's very real and it's becoming more real every day as we've seen the increase in storms, the increase in impacts. So for us, it's identifying where those vulnerabilities are and wanting to work on behavioral changes that can impact how uh, these long-term storms that are behavioral coming in. Behavioral changes, you Behavioral mean. changes around how we get from place to place, right? right? We're gonna have to impact Our behavior. Our behavior you're talking That's about. That's correct. Yeah, 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 Human yeah. behavior is yeah. gonna have to change. And then also looking at what are the, the, get, the, the sort of backstops we can put up to address what we're seeing on a, on a daily basis and on a regular basis. So what are the sea walls look like? Uh, are we allowing and building out land use models that will experience flooding? We know is going to happen. But I, I really talk about climate change as almost like eating an elephant. It's so <laughs> hard to think about. We're going to have to do it sort of one bite at a time. Yeah. And we're going to need a lot of help. Well, then State and federal it. partners. Where do you start eating an elephant? So yeah, you know. For us, it's identifying those vulnerabilities, understanding that we're going to have to think about behavior, not just about we're not going to build sea walls our way out of this issue. It's going to have to be a combination of what are we doing on the ground and what are we doing from a you know impacting human behavior standpoint right. and and identifying those those areas is the most important thing so in, vulnerability plans matter in 2017 Salem voters approved making the city a sanctuary for peace mm -hmm. So it, we hear so many, we hear sanctuary city, we hear other things. What is a right. sanctuary for peace? What does that mean? Yeah, it's very much like a sanctuary city ordinance that essentially says we really care about uh, folks who live in our community, regardless of what their immigration status is. And we want them to know that uh, they're not only welcome and respected in our community, but that they don't have to fear local government officials, uh, don't have to fear our public safety folks. And it was important for us, given our 400 year history as mm -hmm. a place that's welcomed immigrants, that we put a marker on that. And that's what the ordinance does at a time 
time when there was a lot of fear. We had parents not coming to, to you know, their children's school events, uh, fearful even to go because to mass. They, because they were war fearful to go to mass. Fearful to go to Spanish mass on Sunday at a church in town because there's rumors in a community where all of a sudden you used to feel no problem walking down the middle of the street where now you're feeling like, is yeah. ICE going to be patrolling the church that I'm yeah. in? Yeah. You know, what kind of rights am yeah. I going to have? And, and folks um, responded to that. So this was our way of making sure people know we're a welcoming place and we, we celebrate our diversity. Well, well, Salem law enforcement still works and cooperates with ICE. Does, does that create tension? <clears throat> I would say we absolutely feel like as a city our size with large scale celebrations, we welcome cruise ships. We have to work with our federal partners. We want to, we always have. What we what we we want to make sure that if folks are behaving badly and we don't want to keep the bad guys in town. So we have to work with our federal partners, but that doesn't mean that we're gonna be enforcing federal law. Mm -hmm. If you get stopped by a police officer, they're not asking, uh, are you registered to vote? You know, what's your status, yeah, right? right? They're just worried about the issues that are before them. And people needed to know that because there was such intense pressure on immigration rules at the local level based on the national uh, the national discussions. Salem sits in the 6th Congressional District, which is represented by Seth Moulton. He has yeah. talked about running for president. Yes, he he has. hasn't as I said he is. He's seen as, uh, as vulnerable after his falling out with Nancy Pelosi. So let me ask you the question here. Would, would you, if, if Seth Moulton should run for president, right. would you consider running for his seat? You know, I have been working with Seth a lot, and I think he's done a really um, good job of caring about local issues. If he decided he wanted to do something different, I think I'd have to have a discussion. I've been in office for 14 years. I really, I really do value local government and the mm -hmm. role it plays in contributing to people's lives. The most important services you rely on, educating your kids, keeping your neighborhood safe, investing in those places where you make memories, beaches, parks, they're all delivered at the local level. And so that's tremendously valuable to me. Mm -hmm. Some of that perspective in Washington may not be a bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also an executive right now and in, in the executive sort of branch of local government. This would be legislative. So I'd really want to think about, is that the best place for my skill sets? But after 14 years in office, I think it's only natural you, th you, you think about you know, what might come next for me? What are some of the options that exist out there? So We're still far away from the presidential run, but, yeah. but will you support Senator Elizabeth Warren's I'm a big bid? fan. I'm a big fan of Senator Elizabeth Warren. I was actually at her kickoff. I think she's like raised the bar by putting out actual policies that are about issues, about issues that I think are important for our country. But I'm, it's too early to say mm -hmm. I'm 100% in. I'm a huge fan of Mayor Pete Buttigieg. He's a member of a, a coalition that I'm part of called New Deal Leaders. Right. He's been impressive since I've known him in that arena for years. And I think he is somebody that I've been a fan of and been watching from day one uh, getting in this race. So I also, it, it's, it's too early, but I got to say those two folks really captivate uh, my attention. So he's a voice out here that's kind of, but you know him anyway. I mean, I, I know him. He's capable. He's smart. He's thoughtful. He's strategic. And he's talking about issues that matter. I mean, our generation. Right. This but he's month. a mayor of, a, of what, South Bend has got 100,000 people, whatever the number is. Whether you're a mayor of 100,000 or a governor of a state that has, you know, 3 million people, yeah. you're dealing a lot of times with the same issues. Sure, sure. Um, so. You ready for the OTR Pop Quiz? Uh, ready or not, here we go. Yes, I folded it twice. It's oh, a very boy. special Kim oh, Driscoll OTR Pop <laughs> Quiz. I folded it twice. <laughs> All right. All right, here we go. Uh, in, as, in a city as historic as Salem, so much trivia to comb through, so here we go. Multiple okay. choice. You can, you can look at the screen, it'll be okay. there. One of the founding fathers of Salem is depicted in a bronze statue overlooking Salem Common. He's wearing a billowing heavy cloak, a wide brimmed hat, and some visitors say it makes him look like a witch. Is it John Endicott, is it Cotton Mather, is it Roger Conan? Well, I am so glad we started with an easy one. Okay. It's obviously Roger Conan. Very good. The, the man who established the first colony of what is now Salem. Correct. Question two, in Salem Harbor, there is a lovely spot. There are many lovely spots. Yes. But there's a lovely spot with a rather unappealing name, the Misery Islands. So how did the Misery Islands get their name? But in, in, was it A, from the notorious prison once located there, B, from a stranded ship builder, or C, from a drowning tragedy that happened in colonial times? Geez, you know, I actually don't know that one. I'm familiar with Misery Islands, but the, the origin of their name, um, I'm gonna go with C. It's actually B, a stranded shipbuilder, Robert Moulton, who was left stranded on the islands during a winter storm in the 1620s, hence the name Misery. So is there, there's more misery to come in a couple of minutes here <laughs> with Salem Mayor Kim Bristol.